how did what so when mrs doffar came along yeah right when they came to you or however that however that happened mm -hmm. um what is your approach to find to to creating something like that because I'm sure it's challenging to not fall into a Robin Williams impersonation or to, cause there's already an idea of what that is. Mm -hmm. So what is your approach in, in any piece really to developing the characters the way that you do? Um, so with Mrs. Doubtfire, it's, it's, um, it was actually kind of similar to Chaplin in that when I play the, the guy, so in Chaplin, it was Charlie Chaplin and in Mrs. Doubtfire, it's Daniel Hillard. I knew that I could bring a lot of me to those characters, right? I can just put myself in those circumstances and that would be enough. But when the little tramp character with the hat, the cane and the mustache in Chaplin showed up, there's an expectation associated with that. In the same way in Mrs. Doubtfire, when Mrs. Doubtfire shows up, there's an expectation there. The audience has like a warm and fuzzy compartment of their heart that knows what that character sounds like. Um, and I knew that if the audience was going to come on this ride with me, that they had to trust me with this character they already love. So I felt like the first 10 minutes when Mrs. Doubtfire shows up, I had a responsibility to let the audience know I'm as big a Robin Williams fan as they are. I love the things they love about it and that I, I'm going to take care of it. I, I, this performance is in the hands of a fan as big as they are. <laughs> and we all have that voice in our heads, right? We all have Mrs. Doubtfire's voice in the back of our mind. We know what that sounds like. And more than what it sounds like, I remember how it made me feel as a kid. Um, and uh, that was my ultimate responsibility was to try and make the audience feel the way that that had made me feel. So I feel like once I get over the initial hump of introducing that character to the audience and them going, not, oh, that's a great impression, but going that feels like Mrs. Doubtfire to me. And once they give over to that, they'll let me take her anywhere, right? Mm -hmm. um, but it, it, those first few moments I knew had to pay enough homage to Robin Williams that they felt safe in my hands. Um, so that was where I started from. Oh, that's such a beautiful, that's so generous. It's oh. so generous and respectful to to the audience. It's well, That's beautiful. Because I'm, I am as big a fan of the thing as they are. I would be, if I was in the audience and Mrs. Doubtfire walked out and didn't sound like Mrs. Doubtfire in some way, didn't have the warmth or the Scottish brogue or the sort of like th that, that warm spirit, I would, I would immediately reject it. You know what I mean? So I, I knew that there was a, there's a, uh, there's a hand holding that needs to happen before we can bring you to a new place. I love that. Where did you really hone this knack for comedy? And what's really interesting about your comedy is that it always has a heart. There's like a real truth to your comedy, but you're so natural at doing that. And where do you think oh, you man. honed that? I don't know. I mean, I was a huge fan of silly growing up. So like the Muppets, I grew up on the Muppets. <laughs> And as silly as that sounds, like the, the two things that the Muppets always have is sort of an abandon, right? A sense of play and heart. Um, so, so that was probably a big influence on my sort of aesthetic sense of comedy. And then when I was a teenager, I was really into Jim Carrey and Ace Ventura and that like sort of <laughs> ridiculousness. Robin Williams, obviously, is a legend. Um, and then in... Uh, 2012 is when I got cast to play Charlie Chaplin at La Jolla, uh, which later became Chaplin the Musical on Broadway. And um, living inside of Charlie Chaplin's aesthetic for almost two and a half years um, changed, changed me in terms mm. of how I think about comedy, how I approach comedy. Um, like... It's, you know, a, a comedy, particularly in musical theater, has a bad rap for um, people like to use the word over the top or larger than life. Mm -hmm. And I, I very much disagree with both of those terms. If something is larger than life, then it doesn't feel real. What I'm what I try to do is respond as truthfully as I can to maybe larger than life circumstances. And that is what warrants a big 
crazy performance. You know, I remember in Honeymoon in Vegas, uh, uh, there's a scene where I was skydiving. Uh, I didn't know I was going to be skydiving, but I found myself in a plane with a bunch of Elvis impersonators saying the only way out is to jump. That's a ridiculous circumstance. And people would be like, oh my God, your facial expressions in that scene, it was so over the top. But what they were saying was they enjoyed it. So I was like, over the top. What I was actually doing is behaving the way I would actually, actually behave had I found myself in an airplane with a bunch of Elvis impersonators. <laughs> Those are the faces I would be making. So allow the circumstances to be larger than life, but the response to those circumstances to be as honest as you can make them. And Chaplin was the one who really honed that honesty for me. Wow, isn't that like a great metaphor for right now? Honing our, the circumstance, not letting the circumstance dictate the way we, we react, like reacting truthfully to the circumstance. I yeah, mean, allowing yourself to, to respond, mm -hmm. right? To, to react. Yeah, that's so good.